So it could be snowing by the time you see this, and we might not have school for a day. But I told you we talked about romanticism, so here it is. You're probably thinking romanticism and hearts and dates and flowers and I love you and all that, and Whitney Houston singing I Will Always Love You in the background. We'll get Get that out of your mind right now because that's not the romanticism we'll be talking about. So again, romanticism, not hearts, and I love you. But Mr. Gleason, what's I'm romanticism? I'm so glad you asked. So romanticism was a movement in the 19th century, which is the 1800s, that focused on the individual and the imagination over facts and reason and logic and science. So there's a lot more to that. And I'll explain that in just a minute on how this movement developed. All right, so before I continue, I think it's important that I take off my hoodie. You'll understand why in just a second. I just wanted you all to realize that I was still in my dress shirt since I actually don't change my clothes once I get home because I'm a teacher and I have no life. I hope they get my sarcasm. So anyway, okay. Um, anyway, the age of reason. The Age of Reason is the period of time before the Romantic period. So during the 1600s and the 1700s, this Age of Reason happens. It's also referred to as the Enlightenment. So the Age of Reason, or the Enlightenment, is what causes people to start thinking more romantically with the ideals that we will talk about in just a moment. So I think for the best way for us to understand this is to compare the Age of Reason side by side with the Romantic period. I'm gonna make a change. <laughs> so the Age of Reason was a period that was marked by a scientific observation of the outer world. People wanted to explain everything in nature through the use of science or logic or reason. There was an explanation for everything, and there was a way to justify why anything and everything happened. This all began to change, however, at the end of the 1700s with an event called the French Revolution. Now you have to keep in mind that before the French Revolution, essentially every country in Europe was led with a monarchy. They had a king or a king that ruled over, and the majority of the people lived as peasants, very poor people who had little to live for. Now, during the French Revolution, the king's head was chopped off. And once that happens, that sort of changes how a lot of people begin to think about the world and really starts the transformation from the Age of Reason to the Romantic period. So, so the Age of Reason was focused on science and technology. Hello? Well, I guess we really wouldn't consider that new technology, but you get the picture. They're focused on science and technology because something called the Industrial Revolution is going on. This is when they are building factories to increase the industry both in America and in Britain. So they're building more things with technology and focusing on this technology and science to explain their... On the other hand, the Romantics are okay with the mysterious. They're okay with things not being able to be explained. They're intrigued by the supernatural. What's the supernatural? Somebody say something about the crucible and witches. The supernatural. Things we can't explain. Magic. They're intrigued by all of that. Whereas during the Age of Reason, it's not something you would have been interested in. The Romantics also valued the imagination over logic. They like to let their imaginations run wild, which is why a lot of their stories also fall into a category that we refer to as Gothic. Now, I know some of us might be familiar with that word today, and Gothic means much the same thing back then. It refers to a type of horror story that might be filled with graphic blood and the supernatural. This was a realm that was filled with the unexpected, and it just let the imagination run wild.
If I was alive during the Age of Reason, I would have been more concerned with tradition and following standards and doing what society expects me to do. So I would shake your hand and be very polite and just do as I was told to do. The Romantic period completely changes all that with a much crazier, wild view of the world. Whereas somebody during the Age of Reason would emphasize moderation and self-restraint and you shouldn't do too much of anything. I might just have a sip of my water here. The Romantics would tell you to live to excess and live with spontaneity, be spontaneous, just do what you please. Maybe you drink the whole bottle of water. During the Age of Reason, I would have been worried about refinement and elegance and tying my bow ties properly and just living like a proper gentleman. I'll show you guys how to tie a bow tie properly later if you're so concerned, actually. There's my bow tie. But um, seriously, the Romantics desired radical change. They thought that life could not be controlled, and so they lived life however they thought they should live it. It might change from day to day, whereas the Age of Reason brought you a much more structured life, kind of like being in school where you're told to be somewhere and you do it and you listen to what society says. During the Enlightenment, they were focused on a social hierarchy. That means that some people were poor and some people were a little less poor and some people were rich and that's just how society was. Whereas during the Romantic period, they were concerned with the common man the common person, the individual. And it cuts like a knife. He's out of my life. That means not just what Mr. Gleason thinks is important was important, it means what you and you and you thought was important mattered to each his own and the best place to find out where the individual belonged was to go to nature I see trees of green red roses the romantics believed that in nature was where you could really do all this searching and let your imagination run wild. They were sickened by the cities that were being built up with industrialization and they fled to the countryside, which is where a lot of the poems that were written and paintings that were done take place. The romantics thought that nature could not be tamed and they also thought that humans' passionate feelings also could not be controlled and they lived by these feelings. Marriage for the Romantics was about passion and, believe it or not, sex, whereas during the Enlightenment, a lot of the time, marriage would be more about money and power and what you could get out of the marriage in politics or in the community. So the Romantics definitely lean towards the passionate side of life. So hopefully none of you are um, falling asleep yet, but I think we're about ready to conclude. So to review, there's a few key points we need to remember. The Romantics thought that life was uncontrollable. And therefore, we should go to nature to try to figure out some of the answers to life. Romanticism focuses on the individual and passion, whereas the Age of Enlightenment was all about science, reason, and logic. So maybe for you, romanticism just sounds like going to college and acting crazy and wild and following your passion. Maybe not. 
but we'll be reading a few stories in the next couple weeks that help us understand romanticism a little better and maybe just maybe i'll do one of these videos again but probably not because i hate how my voice sounds hope you learned something we'll talk more in just a minute somebody please hit the lights